Hello, I'm Shieldwar100 and welcome back to this special little piece of hell on earth named Gotham. Uh, this is another Batman Miniatures game game report. Uh, specifically, it's the second of the t of the in introductory scenarios which I helped put together for Night Models, and they were kind enough to publish on their website. Link in the description below to everything you'll need to have a look at those. Okay, this accompanies the uh, the Batman film starter set tie-in, which is a really good set. Uh, I've had a look at it on my channel already, and I'm really excited to show you how the game works. Uh, this, this this scenario expands upon what we saw in the first scenario and if you haven't seen that and you're just starting out I strongly recommend you go back and watch scenario one now because that will cover an awful lot of what I'm just going to be taking for granted that you know in this uh, second scenario. Okay, uh, Stuff like basic stuff like moving and combat and stuff like that. We're going to be expanding on quite a bit more so I won't have time to go into it all again, not that much. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this one is so uh, two entitled "Drops at the Pickup," and uh, yeah, this is sort of follows roughly that scene in the film at the recycling plant where the penguins manufacturing drops, etc. It's, gonna, it's quite a fun little scenario. I'm quite proud of how the uh, the like the victory objective system works in this. And yeah, I'm just going to get into. I've set up the game. I'm just going to show you who's on which crew in a second, and we'll start going into what you need to know. Back in just a tick. Okay, here we go. Right, uh, this is how I set up the game, already done. Um, if you look at the scenario, you, first of all, the organized crime player sets up within eight inches of his board edge. And we started off, we just got, as you can see, Oswald Colpot, the penguin there, with the twins, and bouncer number two in the middle there. And we've got Officer uh, Detective Kenzie just over here on his own, just a bit, you know. Everyone's more, a little bit uh, close, just a nice straightforward line since uh, we're not doing anything special, it's an introductory scenario. After that, the Batman crew activate, uh, deploys, sorry, and uh, yeah, they put two models within eight inches of their board edge, which is this one just here. Uh, we've just gone with the Batman, accompanying Lieutenant, uh, yeah, Lieutenant Gordon. Okay, remember him from the first scenario? He's now accompanied by the big scary Robert Pattinson Batman. So yeah, that'd be a good laugh to see how this pans out. Fight after that, uh, the got Catwoman can be deployed anywhere else. We chose her as the one model which could go anywhere. You could choose anyone and if you want to play the snow multiple times you can vary it as much as you want. Went with Catwoman this time. She's stalking the shadows over here, hunting Officer Kenzie, well Detective Kenzie should I say. He's a detective now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she's yeah, she's she's after him, shall we say. Okay, she has to be deployed out of sight. So if we get so uh, obviously line of sight in this game it's kind of straightforward. Um, it's you know, obviously she's got a fairly tall model but so she could normally be seen over this uh, what's the word this um, this crate but uh, what I'd say is uh, there's it, one extra rule which wasn't covered before which I can quickly go into now is the fact is the fact that there's night time in Gotham and that's pretty much when nefarious things are afoot in Gotham it's always night time it's most of the time it's quite dark in Gotham anyway and so line of sight in this game um, if not affected by anything else is limited and capped at 12 inches away so uh, you so the catwoman here is just over 12 inches away from detective Kenzie so he cannot see her regardless of the interference of any boxes or huge walls or anything that might be in the way 12 in you know um, you know if, if they're not there it's, it's clear line of sight 12 inches is the maximum okay there are things that can change that as uh, you know as, as you can imagine but uh, nothing for the purposes of this scenario so she is stalking the shadows over here at 12 inches away nice and easy peasy okay right um, that's that's it for deployment um, let's have go into what other special rules you might need to know for the purposes of this before we really get into the nitty-gritty um, because I want you to have as good an introduction to the game as possible and what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna bring up some uh, Yep, I'm going to bring up a, uh, a character card now. We'll go with the Robert Pattinson Batman. Editing Lee should have put it up there by now. Go on, editing Shield Wall, please. And uh, okay, uh, what if you notice? We've got all the basic stats from what we saw before. Okay, in the middle there that I showed you from scenario one, Batman should be noticeably better than the ones you've seen so far. Um, but yes, you've also got um, these traits down the bottom, and as you can see, there's a list of ten. 
on uh, the Batman here. I chose a very complicated character, of course. He is the Batman. He has a, a lot going on. Uh, but, you know, so I want you to get, a, you know, as good an understanding as possible. So I've gone with possibly the most complicated character in this set. So there's, I'm not, you know, cheaping you out or anything. But what we'll do is um, we'll go through it this quickly and it will yeah it will sort of go i'll show you what we've got okay so look starting from the beginning we can see his list of special traits and these are extra little rules that the character has to make him unique okay and as you can see the top one there is bat claw with a little batarang symbol okay um so uh, bat claw is a special m movement ability okay it's a it's a, it basically means um if we look at if i bring up his, the uh, definition of such Okay, uh, basically once per round, okay, this model will gain plus six inches to its basic move distance and can move in any direction. So he can ignore terrain, go up walls, all that sort of thing, as you'd imagine a person with a big old grappling hook would be able to. Okay, um, right, yeah, and however, he can't use this in two consecutive turns, so it takes a little while to reel back in and recharge. Now, um, this is a special action, and you can tell it's a special action because it's got the little batarang next to it, okay? So if you remember in scenario one, I went into movement actions and attack actions. There's another type of action, it's called a special action, okay? And um, if you've got audacity, remember audacity, that means you can do one of each type of action, okay? A movement action, a tactical action, hmm, come back to that in a bit, which includes attacking, of course and also a special action okay if you don't have audacity you can only do one type of action so it could be a move or a special action or an attack or a tactical action should i say okay um with the back claw it's his special action so he has to have audacity to do this really because it's going to count as his move as well okay it's going to give him bonus move so he ha if he's not moving there's no point doing it as you can imagine um but so he has to spend his special action as well uh, to gain it, give himself plus six inches to his move. Basically, he does that once every other turn if he wants to. All right. So that's that. So if we go back, he, we'd see he's got movement ten, and uh, yeah, so that would give him a basic move, a movement of sixteen inches, ignoring all sorts of terrain, impeding movement, and stuff like that. So yeah, pretty good. Um, so that's how the back claw works. Okay, and that's how you know that's that's basically how you read most of the traits. You see what they say, and then you look them up and they're usually quite straightforward so for example brutal means that uh, a model scores critical hits on a natural roll of five or six well if you read up on what we how we did attacking in the last game if you read up the rules you'd see that criticals happen on the strength die rolls of six with batman's brutal happens on a five or six the detective rule uh, means that uh, he may place or reveal a suspect marker within three inches and line of sight instead of just in contact. And suspect markers is something I'll go into when we get actually get into the game. But that's another big old part of this particular scenario as well. Suspect markers is another way of using your tactical actions. So inst instead of attacking, you can use you can uh, mess around with suspect markers, and Batman can do them from a bit further away. So if you go through and familiarise yourself with the rest of these traits, you see we've got reinforced gloves, which means that when he does a normal fit, when he does pun punches someone, instead of the basic doing one point of stun damage he does two points of stun damage nice and straightforward um yeah some of these traits will not have any effect on this particular scenario for example shadows agent or uh, investigator they both um, relate to building your crew and playing objective cards and we're not using those yet as it says in the scenario pack on the scenario sort of like uh, rules some of these traits will be dealing with objective cards or other things you can ignore those for now we will get to those later on if this tickles your interest okay so yeah yeah the uh, what other ones don't yes uh, so the serum injection look that one up um, so basically uh, it's a special action again so if he does this he won't be using the back claw and again he'll re really need to have audacity to make you best use of this because uh, once per game he can gain two uh, well it gains two free efforts because the X is the two in the brackets up there you see and uh, to free efforts to attack and defense rolls and ignores any modifiers to the effort limit until the end of the round so all stuff that ties into bits and pieces we'll have learnt if you played the first scenario maybe a few times you'll have got to the you know you'll have seen the effort and um, how that affects things this gives him bonus efforts basically which is dashed useful efforts without having to take stun damage is really 
quite handy in this game and you'll find out if you use this serum okay uh, what else has he got I'm vengeance will not really be affecting this particular game um, because it's to do with objective cards as it says however the ballistic bat armor definitely will if you read up on that um, so enemies don't get strength dies when they attack Mr. Pattinson dressed as Batman here so that's 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 useful if you remember the uh, strength rolls can't be blocked in close combat and uh, lots of the firearms uh, wound on twos with shooting on their strength dies the ballistic bat armor just removes that altogether in addition uh, ranged attacks targeting this model roll an even one less die again so not only do they not get the strength die they lose one of their other dice as well one of their attack dice so uh, guns will just be well not really that effective against uh, this version of Batman at all that's uh, so pretty solid armor and does go towards uh, how impervious to gunfire he was during that particular film I do like it but yeah so there's a lot of traits on this model okay I'm not gonna pretend there isn't it's the sort of game where you'd be like oh it's a bit overwhelming and yeah it can be at first in terms but if you've got your collection of models and you get used to what they do then really it does get a lot easier over time and quite a lot of these rules you don't really need to remember all that much to be perfectly honest just uh, you got the cards or you know you've got your record on the app and um, you know what I do is I print the uh, the cards off of the app myself so I've got what an aid memory to my you know on my face but I'm a bit old-fashioned like that if you're used to using the app you've got the, the the special rules and their definitions right in front of you all the time and it's really handy that way um, yeah it's, it's straightforward if, you know um, a lot of the models share similar rules as well and you get really used to it if you're using your collection over several games you'll get used to what's in your in your uh, in your in your um, in your particular crew's um, you know makeup, in, you, you know it's it, it's quite easy and straightforward to get the hang of. Trust me, it's the sort of thing. A little bit of practice goes a heck of a long way, and I'll be showing you a lot of these in this scenario playthrough as well. So that's how traits work. Get, get you know both players if there's two of you get 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 an idea as to what your your basics of what your crewmen do if you miss one it's really not the end of the world you know you'll pick it up next time i mean heck that's how you learn really isn't it you know suddenly you realize it and you you know you, you go oh i should have done that a long time ago and you know but overall as long as you're having fun that doesn't matter you'll see it in the snot in the battle reports i put up there are traits which i clean forget until the end of the game and stuff and kick myself after i'm done recording but you know just don't just don't don't let it get to you all right <laughs> right okay gonna move on now gonna think gonna start turn one and I'll uh, be picking up with the rest of the rules as we go well into turn number one we go and uh, I'll start breaking this down a bit more than I think I did last time so first of all as before is the take the lead phase which is uh, phase one of round one and uh, we're gonna go with uh, blue for Batman and uh, white for organized crime and with highest die roll gets the initiative for the first turn uh, the first round oh so the, the organized crime crew get the initiative okay right so that's that um, uh, nothing else to do in the take the lead phase in this scenario next it's the raise the plan phase which is uh, second phase and it's where we put out audacity coat tokens now if you remember last time there are only three models per side so everybody got an audacity counter that's uh, these jobbies here uh, right because there are five models now on the penguin well the organized crime crew he has to choose which models are going to get the audacity counters don't forget audacity means uh, that the model gets to do one of each type of action as opposed to just choosing one from the lot so it's a little bit of a choice to make who's going to not who's going to miss out really well you always it's good good rule of thumb to pop one with your your boss anyway the bit the best model on your crew and that's going to be the penguin there going to go with officer kenzie as well and the twins look like they'd like to have one each I uh, wouldn't want one of them to miss out. So we're going to go with this bouncer number two with the baseball bat. He's not going to be getting audacity in turn one, but of course next turn maybe he'll get a treat. Uh, on the Batman crew side, back to only three models, but what are three models, huh? Uh, Batman, Lieutenant Gordon, oh, that way around, and Selina Carr, of course. We'll have her uh, some of that. Okay, so that's the that's the take the lead phase, and now we're going to go to the execute the plan phase. Now, uh, before I get into individual miniature uh, 
you know um, activation etc which I will have to cut for here and there um, I'm actually going to explain one little more extra rule from uh, for, for scenario 2 and that's about passing okay as you recall we activate in order of uh, who goes you know in, in one one sorry alternating um, activations okay one one side chooses a model does his actions other side chooses a model does his actions all clear straightforward it's easier until one side has more figures than the other then you can imagine there might be some discrepancies starting to come up because one side might end up with a whole stack of actions to do in one go or it might mean that uh, the crew with the uh, the smaller model count will have to reveal its hand a little bit more than uh, it, sh it feels it might have to, you know, wouldn't have to if it wasn't so heavily outnumbered. So there are passes in this game. So uh, what we do is at the start of the execute the plan phase, you count up the discrepancy between the two sides in model count. And of course, this means that the Batman crew here has uh, two models fewer. So they get two passes, which is a little counter. I pop here next to their cards I, put, I printed out and uh, that means I'll be able to just to keep record as to how they uh, that means when the Batman crew would normally have to activate if they choose they can use one of their passes to force the organized crime crew to go again easy peasy lemon squeezy probably took a bit longer to explain than I should have done but there you go okay right so uh, it's it's round one take the take uh, execute the plan I'm gonna go into the penguin crew now and, ex and uh, start the game back in just a moment organized crime crew as we know will be going first and we're gonna go with this twin with the folded arms okay is he number one or is he number two let me uh, let me check quickly sorry he is the twin two haha -ha, there you go officially the twin two anyway he has audacity as you can see there so he has a full suite of a movement action a tactical action and a special action okay well I looked at his card he doesn't have a special action he wants to use but he will be moving forwards and I measured he can get to about here uh, about there yeah there's his eight, his eight inch movement and uh, he's going to use his tactical action now remember I said it's not just an attack that you can do as a tactical action it's also a, uh, a manipulate action is the other one uh, as I uh, as the uh, scenario rules say he recommends looking those up but I'm going to go into them now anyway uh, to, for you know for your benefit so a manipulate action is uh, one where you, well, the, the model does something sort of involving hands-on approach, but uh, it's not an actual fighting move, okay? So he could be manipulating a piece of equipment, he could be manipulating a sewer cover in order to open it up and use it, or he could be manipulating it in terms of using, putting down a, or taking up a suspect marker. Now, suspect markers are these things, okay? And we're using the red ones for organized crime in keeping with their audacity marker and he puts it in base contact with himself just there okay so he is placing a suspect marker lots of objective cards maybe scenario rules might refer to placing a suspect that's what it means okay this is a friendly suspect marker to him because it's one his crew has put down and it's in their colors okay and that represents it's an abstract concept okay a lot one of the questions that comes up on you know social media and various groups a lot is what actually are suspect markers for what do they do are they worth doing at all is there you know and uh, yes basically they are uh, what they represent is uh, it's an abstract concept representing things that your crew does so for organized crime you can imagine it's them extorting putting down you know doing nefarious things in the in the outside it could be them uh, planting evidence for later it could be them roughing up suspects or just you know whatever your crews you know feeling out intel for the police it could be beating up witnesses I mean sorry you know interrogating with you know interrogating suspects and uh, you know all, all sorts of different things okay um, but yeah it's an abstract concept representing this guy's gone over here and he's checked out around the corner of the car maybe he's checking that the drugs or the money is still in there okay so a suspect marker is put down for this and for the purpose of this scenario at the end of the turn at the end of round four because all scenarios last four rounds okay um at the end of round four each suspect marker on the board will be worth two victory points towards the kitty okay and that's uh, that's a good that's a that's, that's a good score okay so you want you want to get as many of these suspect markers out as possible okay um there's a maximum of eight suspect markers per side. That's a universal rule in this game, just so you know. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it. These these markers can be picked up, put down. If you remember, 
the Batman here has the detective rule, which allows him to pick those up or put them down uh, from three inches away, rather than just in base contact. The twin here is not a detective, far from it. He has to put them down in, in, you know, in base contact with himself. All right, and uh, yeah, so that's him done. Uh, if you look at his special rules, he has the it's mine trait, okay? Um, you may have noticed this already if you've done your homework, but I'm just gonna say, um, it, it means that uh, while he's within two inches of friendly suspects, he can't act, this suspect marker cannot be revealed by the enemy. And revealing a suspect, okay, is a, another manipulate action. It's another thing you can do. If you are near enough to an enemy suspect, instead of putting one a suspect of your own down, maybe because you're not allowed to for some reason, you can pick theirs up instead, and that takes it off the board. It's as simple as that. Of course, the it's mine trait on this uh, this twin here will prevent that from happening because of his special rules. He's obviously very protective over his stuff, as I'm sure any twin would be. Okay, right. That concludes this uh, this activation. A bit of a long one, but I had to explain suspect markers. It will speed up. Trust me. Okay. Right. We're going to go now to the Batman crew. Okay, playing it a little bit safer, a little bit cards close to the chest E. Uh, the Batman crew is actually going to go with Lieutenant Gordon at first, and as you can see, he's always he's got he's definitely got audacity because the counter is there. So first of all, he's going to do his movement action, okay, and that's where he just going he's going to shuffle forwards to there. Not go, not in the not in the mood for charging headlong into the gunfight or whatever. He's got Batman to do that for him, okay. Uh, just pop this there next to him. He's uh, also got his manipulate action as well. Well, his uh, tactical, should I say, use the right words, Lee. Uh, he's going to put down a suspect marker. Now, Lieutenant Gordon is a detective, and so he can put a suspect marker down within three inches. So rather than having to put it, say, there or there, he's going to pop it over here, a bit further away out of danger, okay? Now, one thing to bear in mind is that you're not allowed to place suspect markers inside your own deployment zone or within two inches of your deployment zone. So you have to take a bit of a gamble. So he's moved out of his deployment zone and put it over there. He's, he's more than two inches away from where they had from the eight inch deployment zone that they had to deploy in. So that's perfectly legal, okay, to pop that there. But uh, yeah, so he couldn't, you can't just hang back you stick out your, your suspect markers and just you know and just chill you've really got to take you know you've got to put them in a little bit in harm's way which is good and that again that is a universal rule it's not me making it up for this scenario it's a good one to get into your head because some people miss that little bit and it does color their first few games trust me <laughs> uh, right so lieutenant gordon has done his movement and his tactical action so don't forget manipulating that suspect marker is his tactical action so he couldn't now shoot if he had line of sight to an enemy or something because he's done his tactical action already. Uh, he has, he's got his special action, and uh, for that, he's going to use his support Batman um, special action. So if you look up his, uh, what the, his, uh, his character card, you see that trait there? Okay, uh, basically target a friendly model with the alias the Batman within eight inches of line of sight. Well, this Batman certainly is that okay immediately perform an action with that model so it basically gives batman an out of or each sequence action so he could use that to move or to cut to, to shoot to, to you know to, to, to punch someone if he was close enough what he's actually going to do is put down is use a manipulate action and pop down another suspect marker so excuse me while i just grab one and again don't forget this batman is a, is a detective so although he's standing in his deployment zone he can put it within three inches so he's just going to pop it here so by definition outside of three outside of two inches of deployment zone because it's there cool nice easy peasy lemon squeezy nasty and uh, yeah that's uh, oh just shuffle it back attached there you go um that's that's yeah that's it and uh, so two one for the suspect markers means that the batman crew will be outscoring the penguin and his chums at the moment okay but uh, not still to play for and we're going to go back to organized crime now and uh, yes oh there was one more thing you can't place a, su a friendly suspect marker within four inches of another friendly suspect marker. Sorry, I, me I should mention that. Um, so you can't just stack them all up in the uh, in in a you know in a nice little pile somewhere. You've got it's all, all to do with you got to keep it spread out. Okay, right. Um, and you've got to make put them in harm's way sometimes as well if you want to get those lovely markers out. All right, right. Now we're going to go back to the organised crime crew. See how the game develops. 
while following the pointing finger of the penguin um, Bouncer 2 has activated I actually did his move while I was off camera whoopsie sorry uh, he actually as he did not have audacity no counter next to him he only has one action so he can't actively uh, what's the word he can't do um, both a move and a placing of a suspect marker he has or a special action he has to pick one he picked to move so he moved forwards and that here's his activation done so without an audacity marker to show the ticks we just put one of these little markers next to him to show that he has been and gone and that is him done I'm afraid for his turn he's teasing out perhaps giving you know dangling a toe in front of the vicious Batman maybe you'll get him to come forward and give him a or something I don't know but uh, yes that concludes his activation and we're gonna go back now to the Batman crew and the Batman crew are not going to activate they have their passes here they're gonna make use of it they they want to see where the uh, organized crime crew are gonna be going so I'm gonna take this number two and turn it into a number one just like that and uh, they go back to organized crime now see so what uh, force them into making some actions well, the twin one is going to go next. Uh, with Audacity, you got the full set of moves he can do. So he actually moves forward to about here, I think. Yeah, I think that's about where it was. I did pre-measure, you see, now I'm trying to remember where I actually put him. <laughs> uh, he has a, a tactical action, and he's going to pop his suspect marker right here. Again, he has the It's Mine trait, so no one's going to be pinching that off him when he's within two inches of it, okay? It's more than four inches away from this one, so it's completely fine and legit to do. Uh, he does have a special action. Uh, called widespread corruption, which is really good, especially in the uh, you know context of this particular crew, uh, this particular scenario. If you look it up, you'll see what I mean. Unfortunately, it has a range of eight inches, and uh, the only the, the enemy suspect mark within eight inches he would uh, so that he would be using isn't within eight inches. Sorry, so he hasn't quite got the range to do it yet. So he was just a bit more than that far. He was a bit too far away to be able to get it off this turn. So never mind, no big deal. Maybe next turn. So no special action for him don't feel incidentally when you're playing the game don't feel like you're wasting your dusty points if you don't get to do a special action with every model every turn sometimes they're very situational sometimes they uh, don't really have you know um, they're really meant for special occasions only sometimes and some models simply don't have them at all so you know it's what you need just just puzzle out what you need for your models this turn if the special action works excellent if it doesn't then you might not be got too much to cry about all right right well never mind back to the batman crew Batman crew uh, not wanting to use another pass really not just yet they've activated then they're gonna go with Selina Carr okay uh, I've did pre-measure where she's gonna go she has audacity of course so she gets to move first we and it's over here into contact with this other audacity marker of theirs that's why I worked out she could go and uh, I'll just get Kenzie's audacity out of the way right she's now going to attack uh, detective Kenzie with her chain whip which has uh, if you look at its traits it's got reach two on it which means she can attack up to two inches away so this is completely fine and legit okay so uh, here we go just gonna grab myself the stack the stack cards I will do this particular combat um, in front of us all because uh, for old time's sake and because I'm, I started the turn with her over here in future you might just see me cut away and cut back having done the die rolls okay it's just that I you know can't be doing this nonsense all the time it's an editing nightmare I tell you oh the treble the perils of being a crap youtuber anyway right uh, I'm gonna do she's gonna put in no uh, no so officer Kenzie uh, let's see his defense is three Catwoman's defense is four so at the beginning she ends up with a attack attack pool say of the the obligatory strength die and four attack dice okay uh, the chain whip is heavy so that means the strength die, instead of wounding on the, uh, well, hitting, so to say, on the normal five or six, which would be required by her strength of five plus, it would do on a four plus, okay? And he's, she's got four extra dice. So Kenzie is actually going to put in three effort to reduce uh, Catwoman's attack pull just down to this. Um, she's actually going to effort three times back in as well to put them back in again, okay? Well then, yeah, so there we are. So that's that. We're going to roll these dice. So these are, right, so if you remember from before, so it's fours for the strength die and threes or more 
for the attack dice to match Kenzie's at defense of three. Let's roll them over here. So here they are. So the strength die crucially fluffs it because you can't block the strength die, don't forget. So that one does as well. So you've got three hits. Mm, could have been better. Could have been better. Kenzie has three dice. Just take that one to block with. Okay, so three dice to block with because his defense is three. He will successfully block a hit on a four or more because that will match or beat Catwoman's attack value. Okay, so let's roll them. So there we go. He rolls, he gets one block. So out of the three hits, okay, th um, she is uh, one of them has been blocked, taking it down to two successful hits. And looking at Catwoman's. Uh, stats on her chain whip it does two points of stun damage for every uh, successful here we are sorry for every successful hit does two points of stun damage on detective kenzie Ooh. which is sufficient so there you go overall including the effort he put in he's taken seven points of stun damage it's quite mighty his willpower is six so oh no <laughs> he is ko'd that does remove his pass marker Okay. Uh, his uh, audacity counter okay so that's a bummer for him and uh, knocks him out on the spot that will be his turn done and dusted then won't it um so uh, yeah that's that and if you look at the scenario special rules officer kenzie starts the game with a uh, a loot marker the model which K any model which ko's or takes him out of the game immediately grabs that marker and it stays with them so catwoman has grabbed the loot off him okay and that's what she exactly needed to do that's why she was hunting him okay it's all there in the scenario rules i hope you saw it <laughs> but it was okay and uh, yeah so for the price of three points of effort which i'll be putting on her character card as well with the loot uh, she is ko'd officer kenzie uh, detective kenzie and stole the loot lovely right so uh, one last thing detective kenzie hadn't activated yet for the turn because one of um, the, the organized crime crews models has been uh, taken out of action they're no longer in the you know in the running towards the, the model count remember from passes so what that immediately does is it means the organized crime crew gains a pass marker in other words the one pass marker that the batman crew did have is removed altogether Okay, so no more passes for the Batman crew because they've just leveled the playing field in terms of numbers a little bit. Okay, well then, that was a dynamic first activation for Catwoman, but uh, we'll see how that pans out for the future. Okay, we're going to go back to organized crime now. They've got the Penguin to activate. Okay, well, yes, as I said, the Penguin, he activates. He has audacity, as we know, gives him the full bunch of moves. Okay, so he's going to move forward to here or so. Uh, he is now going to, oi, sorry, excuse me, move the scenery, pop that next to himself. He's got the uh, handyman rule, which gives him a free manipulate action every turn. He's going to use that right now to pop down a suspect marker. Okay, uh, he is now going to use his special act activation, uh, action, sorry, to order his chum here to put down a suspect marker as well. So look up those traits, you'll see what they do. Each of these is more than four inches away from each other, so that's fine. He is now going to, uh, what's the word? He's now going to attack Catwoman, okay? And uh, that's with his, uh, with his, well, with his um, penguin's gun, can't remember exactly what it is, but uh, if you see, right, so going into the pool of dice, he has uh, the strength die and four for the mighty rate of fire of his rapid firing weapon, okay? He has moved, however, so unfortunately he loses two dice, including the strength die, boo. Catwoman, for her part, has the acrobat trait, which means she can put in efforts to remove dice from shooting coming her way. So she's going to put two effort in. That's the most she can do. Don't forget, she can't. She's got willpower six, and she's taken three points of uh, stun damage already from her effort before. So she can put two in now. But takes two more dice out because uh, dodging gunfire is better than getting hit by bullets anyway. So he's down to one die, but he has forced her to exert herself to dodge. Her defense is four, so this hits on a four or more. It hits, so uh, doing two points of blood damage to Catwoman, okay? It grazes her shoulder as she somersaults out the way or something, okay? And that concludes Penguin's activation, okay? Just the one model to go left or the go for the cruise now, and what a model it is. Battinson, in all of his glory, activates. He has his full suite of actions, so he's going to activate his uh, 
excuse me, his special action to use his back claw. Okay, and uh, yes, that adds six to his already prodigious movement distance of 10 to allow him to zip into combat over here with the twin, uh, one, twin one. Uh, right, so uh, now he's got his tactical action. He couldn't manipulate to remove this suspect marker because of the twins it's mine trait. So he's gonna beat him up instead for fun. Uh, right, so another combat resolution for the, you know, just one for the road before we go into turn round two. Right, there's a basic pull, one strength, four on the attack, because that's uh, Robert Pattinson's attack value, or Batman's even. Uh, right, so uh, the twin for his part will effort three times there to reduce the attack pull by three. Uh, because of the vengeance, the I'm Vengeance rule, every um, effort that um, this version of Batman puts in gets him two dice instead of one back. So for two points of effort, he gets two, four. Okay. Shoo. Go away, cat. <laughs> oh, boy. Right. Right, okay, here we go. So the... Um, the twin's defense is normally three, but it's up to four now because his brother's on the board and he's got the competitive trait. So three's to damage with this one and four's to hit with the blue ones, okay? Here we go. Oh, that's a, that's a hefty roll. Okay, so four hits, mighty, and a critical hit with the uh, strength die as well, so that's pretty good. Uh, right, so moving back, so it's four, five hits, including the strength die. The uh, Twin gets four dice to defend with because he's defenseful, needing force to block because that's the attack of the Batman. Oh, just the one. So that's a mighty bunch of hits through. More than sufficient to, uh, well, to finish laying out the. Uh, where's my. Uh, more than sufficient to finish laying out the thug. Okay, and that also KOs him. Boom. Takes him up to his willpower 6, which is plenty. Okay, so that's the uh, the thug KO'd. Uh, right, now um, he's out. It, the It's Mine trait no longer applies, so for a further one point of effort, back this Batman can use the Vigilante's work trait. If you look it up, it allows him to take an extra manipulate action by making an effort, and he's going to do that by picking up this here suspect marker. So that's one revealed suspect marker. Okay, we keep a track of the number of suspect markers revealed by each side during the course of this game because you'll need them for scoring points later on. Okay, and uh, yeah, that concludes uh, Batman's activation and all the models activations for the turn. It's uh, been pretty brutal already. Two models KO'd on the organized crime side with plenty of suspect markers out and uh, yes, everyone's fully in broad now so it could, could still there's plenty to go. Okay, gonna go into the recount phase of turn four where there's more to relate than there was before and I'll take you through it in just a second okay back in just a moment the recount phase in your standard game of Batman miniatures game includes a lot more than just cleaning up counters and whatnot. Uh, you do do that, of course, because it makes the board look better. But uh, yeah, what you do is there's actually a whole recovery phase, which we didn't cover in scenario one. It's very simple and straightforward to keep going on, though. Every model that is conscious, as in uh, not knocked out <laughs> uh, and on the board, can remove one point of stun damage in the recount phase of every round. So Batman, who was carrying three, takes one off and goes down to two. The Catwoman, Selina Carl, who actually had five points of stun damage accrued across the turn, takes one of those away. Uh, unfortunately for the organized crime crew, they don't have anyone carrying any uh, loose stun damage. Everyone's knocked out, but knocked out models can actually try and regain consciousness, okay? And so we're going to come to something called uh, willpower rolls in a second, which is what we'll do. Well, it's actually endurance rolls, sorry. Uh, but never mind. Uh, they actually get to try and recover from being knocked out. Uh, so it's not automatic, okay? So we'll start with Detective Kenzie here, okay? If you recall, he was KO'd because he's got a amount of stun damage which uh, matches his uh, well, well matches his willpower he can actually make an endurance test now in order to try and uh, shake that off and uh, just become and flip that over to being knocked down instead of knocked out okay um, right what you need to do is when you take a statistic test in this game is you roll three dice okay and you pick the two you want and um, if the equal to, if the if the uh, the two that you choose is total is equal to or less than the score you need, you know the statistic you're testing against then you pass the test okay however if you're not 
knocked out, you reduce the number of die you roll by one. So it's a straight two dice roll, add both of them together. It's an endurance test to come back from being knocked out. And so uh, what we need to do is get a six or less because um, Detective Kenzie's um, endurance is six. So nice and simple, two dice, six or less, and he'll come around. Let's see what we get. Oh, well, that is very not, okay? So the upshot of that is that Detective Kenzie is still seeing little Tweety Birds. Meanwhile, uh, the twin over here has willpower six because his brother's still on the board, so uh, he is the same thing. Two dice, six or less. Well, the opposite, almost. So uh, he is actually uh, coming round. So he goes from being KO'd to knocked down, okay? And on his character card, He's carrying, he's got six points of stun damage. I'm actually going to take some of that off and put him down to five. So, uh, yeah, so there you go. He's on five points of stun damage. He is knocked down, which puts him in a pretty uh, perilous position. But nonetheless, he is, uh, well, better off than he was, okay? And uh, so there you go. Um, pretty good altogether. Sometimes henchmen go down and they never get back up again because they have relatively low willpower. But uh, not bad one out of two isn't bad at all, okay? And that concludes the recount phase for this starter scenario. That's all you'll be doing. Recovery and tidying up things, okay? Okay, right. So it's now time to go into round two. For the next round, I'm going to stop showing you all the combat rolls and whatnot because uh, uh, obviously brevity and everything. I can relate to you, though, what's going on, all right? So into, into round two it is. Right, into round two we are. I've just completed the take the lead phase and the raise the plan phase, so let's show, tell you what happened. Um, well, with the in terms of who won the initiative, it was a double one on the initiative roll. So uh, the, t the side that didn't have it before, aka the Batman crew, has the initiative this round. It, turn it, it alternates in the case of uh, a tie, basically. So yes, uh, the Batman crew will be going first in this crucial turn two. Uh, right, next was the raise the plan phase and once again just a case of putting out audacity the batman crew went first because they had the initiative they put one on each of their models and the same pretty much for organized crime they've only got four active models left because detective kenzie is still out for the count so penguin baseball bat bouncer the uh, the downed twin and the not downed twin they're all going for it okay right so that's that you see you can rattle along pretty quickly as you go uh, once you get used to it and uh, right we're going to go into the execute the plan phase uh, phase three that is and yeah so uh, the batman crew will be going first here we go. Selena Kyle activated first. She was uh, very conscious that she was standing in front of the penguin with his still smoking uh, gun here and uh, she can't keep dodging at the rate she has and she doesn't really want to be full of bullet holes carrying as she is the loot. So time to make a beat a hasty retreat. So activated her for the first activation of the turn and uh, she went for it. So first of all she put down a suspect marker with her manipulate action um, just like a leaving a little calling card by the unconscious body of Kenzie there and then she just moved away okay and the next thing she did was to use her uh, special action which she still had left to apply her disguise so she's blending back into the shadows did they really see her there maybe not maybe she's just a bystander or something who knows but uh, yeah she's uh, applied the disguise again so check that trait out as and when you get a chance it'll help her if she gets caught in close combat later on maybe baseball bat thug fancies a go or something anyway that concludes her activation and uh, back to penguin now the hitherto unconscious twin is going to celebrate him coming round and being towered over by the Batman by getting out of dodge uh, he was over here and uh, so what he decided to do he was knocked down which is, gives him impaired movement until he stands up and active well, by moving so he's he had audacity the first thing he really had to do was move he can't he can't take any other actions whilst you're knocked down in the rules so yeah being knocked down is pretty much the first thing you need to get rid of so he stood up losing four inches off his move he carried on moving over here he then used his uh, what's it called? Sorry, these uh, widespread widespread corruption trait uh, to target this Batman. Um, suspect marker within 8 inches of line of sight what he does is he puts a marker of his own in contact and then removes the anyway one so uh, that's pretty good so does that count as a removal 
It's a removal, yes. So, okay, a bit of terminology tech for you guys here. It doesn't count as a reveal, so you get one victory point in this game for every enemy suspect you reveal. That's if you spend a, a manipulate action just picking them up, okay? So, like uh, Batman did over here last turn, he revealed the enemy suspect marker. This is a literal remove of the enemy one, so it doesn't count as a reveal, so it won't count towards the uh, the points, but it does, however, allow him to swap his out for, yeah, for one of theirs, which is still a great use in this scenario okay and uh, the next thing he's going to do is if he's got the move excuse me just gonna check oh just about see that four you can put a suspect marker just here it's too it's far enough away from this one. Oh yes so just about we'll say he's gonna pop down a suspect marker with his own manipulate action so a bit of a suspect marker manipulation turn go goodness for uh, the twin number one here yeah, so uh, pretty good stuff there for organised crime. I'd say they are they are taking a battering on the board in terms of damage, but they are playing the suspect game pretty well. Lieutenant Gordon's going next for the Batman crew, and he's had enough of these guys getting back up again after his friend knocks them down. Uh, right, he's actually in line of sight. He was in line of sight of the twin. He used one of his rounds of ammunition to fire his gun. Remember from last game, he has a gun. Uh, despite losing the strength die to the associated bits of intervening bits of scenery on the way, he was able to roll and get one hit, which is one point of blood, one point of stun, which is plenty to knock this guy back out again. Okay, because he was teetering on the edge. Uh, right. So Gordon actually is within eight inches. I pre-measured to check. So I'm going to move him into base contact just here. You can end your turn, end your move on suspect markers. That's no problem there. Um, and so yes, and what he's got, he's got a special action left to go, and he's going to arrest this guy. Now arrest is a move which is really useful if you're the Batman crew. They're pretty much one of the few. Well, it's one of their staples. Not it is available as a skill to other crews, but not very much. Um, but yes. Yeah, so if they move into base contact with a, a, a knocked out enemy model, uh, they can use their arrest special action and pick them up as if they were a casualty, which will remove that model from the game. Okay, that's uh, a good one to do because uh, gets rid of an enemy model permanently means he can't get back up and start walking around again. Okay, and that concludes Lieutenant Gordon's activation. Oz went next and he had revenge on the mind. He was over here and uh, he first of all used his um, tactical action to open fire on D Lieutenant Gordon in revenge using his last round of ammunition in spite and murdered, well injured the, uh, the, d the Lieutenant in cold blood. Uh, so yes, six points of blood damage from caused by three hits. There was some cover which removes the strength die but uh, enough, dam enough uh, basic uh, hits got through to to, to do the damage and uh, three hits six points of blood Gordon is endurance six so he is off the board and out of the action for the remainder of this game no, I'm not having a good run Gordon in my intro game so far <laughs> so yeah there you go just pick these up whoopsie let's just pop him back there we are. no you didn't see that right okay um, I think he was in contact with that. Okay, right, um, right, let's see. And then next thing he did was to move over here and then use his handyman based uh, extra manipulate action to pop down a suspect marker as well. Uh, just inside the deployment zone and two inches of it and away four inches from this one as well. So uh, yeah, he's there. He's keep making sure to keep within four inches of a friendly goon at all times because he has the protect me trait which allows him to palm off damage onto attacks onto friendly lives nearby uh, keep an eye out for that one it's penguins survival and the reason why the batman hasn't stomped straight towards him thus far because he just palm off the hits on someone less important anyway right uh, that's the penguin done or oh, there's he a good thing batman is vengeance otherwise uh, he'd be a bit lost right now mm. Well, uh, the Batman activated the last for his crew and uh, he moved into combat with the other twin because uh, he's got deja vu on the mind. He wants to punch him out too. Uh, right, he activated. Um, right, so it didn't go so well for him this time despite the fact that this twin doesn't have his brother around. This is only defense four. Uh, the twin put two points of effort in, as you can see there from one of the markers, uh, to reduce the attack pool. Batman only put one in to equalize it, back up to a plentiful number of dice 
dice, but only the strength die got through this time. It was a it was a roll of a three, so uh, caused a point, two more points of stun damage, but uh, the twin managed to block all the other hits coming in. So uh, only, he's only taken four altogether, which leaves him conscious still. Flagging, surely, but still conscious, which is good for him, and in base contact with the Batman. Okay, that concludes um, Batman's activation. He decided he wasn't going to uh, do the uh, what's the word do do the vigilante's work um, manipulate um, yeah manipulate action because he's uh, that'd be another point of effort and he's starting to run a little bit low he does got an eye on that counter so uh, you know doesn't want to go unconscious if he can help it right so uh, back to the uh, organized crime crew Bouncer 2 with the baseball bat activation was really looking to uh, get in his boss's favour. He moved into contact with the Batman and swung at him with his baseball bat. Batman didn't put any effort in to defend himself. Uh, the thug here though took put an extra 3 in to give himself 3 more dice. He was rolling 6 dice altogether. Uh, the bat armour removed the strength die, don't forget, so he was just rolling three, uh, six, sorry, 6 straight attack dice against the Batman. Uh, right, so the Batman was outnumbered. He was already in base contact with an enemy model. So uh, he's counts as outnumbered, which reduces for the purposes of uh, his what's the word um, defense value for the purposes of this combat down to three from four. Remember that from the first scenario, if you're outnumbered, you reduce your defense by one. Certainly affected this. It certainly affects this Batman and did so here to bad effect. Overall, two hits got through after the Batman's defense, and that was enough to do four points of stun damage. Baseball bat doing two points per hit, so that was enough to KO the Batman. Oof, that's not good. So Batman is KO'd. Didn't think we'd see that. Uh, so that's not good. At the cost of three points of stun damage to the uh, the henchman, but a small price to pay, I'd say, for knocking out the best model on the get in on the board. Okay, so yeah, um, pretty good. I mean, uh, obviously uh, Batman's well versed in the language of violence, but a baseball bat to the back of the head, it speaks the same in any language. Right, on to the remaining twin, and it's his last activation for the round. Uh, he activated, and he has audacity, so first of all, he used his, his tactical action to attack the Batman. And uh, the Batman was not was attacked, was knocked out, so uh, it's a little slight difference to what happens. Um, right, so although the twin normally has a weapon that only does stun damage, when you attack a knockdown model, they reduce their defense by one. Uh, he was outnumbered already, so his defense was two, the Batman, so hitting on twos the bat armor took the strength die away but uh, the the twin still with his mobster trait had four attack dice hitting on twos okay and he hit with every single one of them uh, every hit that you cause on a knockdown model in close combat does an extra point of blood as you know so uh, that basically means that he did four points of blood on the Batman he's putting as he puts the the boot in to the unconscious uh, Battinson uh, having done that he moved away and uh, that concludes his turn he's moving over here obviously got his eyes on that suspect marker over there maybe for next turn to pick it up or something yes and that concludes the activations for round two it's uh, certainly getting pretty brutal lots of uh, models are being taken off the board now on both sides but uh, yes it's uh, nasty when Batman's out we need to go to the recount phase see what happens next Right, and uh, the recount phase just completed. Uh, every model that uh, was still conscious and uh, has not, you know, has, and has got some stun damage on them takes one point off. So that'll be Catwoman, the Twin, and the Bouncer Two Thug over here for their various uh, problems. Uh, then I rolled for recovery on models which were KO'd. Unsurprisingly, with an endurance of nine, the Batman came around, so he's reduced to consciousness, albeit still knocked down. But uh, he is on. Uh, yeah, he's he's back up and in the game basically, and unfortunately for the for the crime, Detective Kenzie remains KO'd. He rolled rather high on his endurance test. So into round three now. Both sides have got some models still on the board and able to fight, but uh, yes, the organised crime certainly has an advantage in the numbers of uh, and suspect markers on the board. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, back in just a sec. 
Okay, round threes uh, take the lead and raise the plan phases are both complete now. Uh, the Batman crew won the initiative. They had a bonus on the die roll for the initiative uh, caused by having a pass marker left at the end of last turn's activations and the Penguin crew didn't. So for every pass marker you have at the end of the turn, you get plus one on the next turn's initiative roll. And Batman had one, which allowed them to win the initiative by the grace of that. Uh, so the uh, raising the uh, in raise the plan phase, very straightforward, every model is remaining conscious and upright has a uh, audacity counter. There's not enough models left on either side to have to make a choice anymore. So that's basically it. We're gonna go into the execute the plan phase. There are three models for organized crime and two for Batman. So Batman team gets a uh, one pass okay for the coming round i don't think they'll be necessarily using it it's at the point of the game where you really want to be using your activations but uh, right batman crew to go first in the execute the plan phase well batman really need to go first uh, before because being knocked down is uh, in a very dangerous position for yourself you don't want to get ko'd again before he uh, got a chance to move so uh, he got up that it's the first action he had to do unfortunately for him that's all he could really you know do i mean in terms of because he wanted to remain in base contact with this thug who was still heavily uh, well um stun damaged from last time and he made rather short work of him as you can see despite the thug putting in an effort to try and defend himself i mean him for a penny him for a pound eh? he was still KO'd quite easily by the Batman after all was said and done. Unfortunately that's it for Batman's activation. He can't really do anything else. He doesn't have any spare, uh, what's the word, any spare stun damage left to uh, put out, you know, to make an effort and do a uh, manipulate action unfortunately for him. He is done for the turn. Okay, but he is up and running and maybe he'll be back to full fitness next turn. Penguin activated next and he moved up over here. Oh, where's his activation mark gone? Oops, I must have moved it off the board. Haha, <laughs> silly me. Whee. Okay, and uh, right, so he moved around here and up to there, and then he uh, put down a suspect marker with his tactical action, and then he ordered his, uh, his twin there well it's not his twin the twin that's his i guess uh to uh, pop down a suspect marker of his own all with further than four inches away from other suspect markers just about so that actually means that the organized crime crew has eight suspect markers already on the board which is pretty mighty i haven't actually managed that in any of my other play test games of this so uh yep that's happened um which is the maximum though they have no more suspect markers to place so uh that's that for his activation uh he couldn't he hasn't got any more ammunition in his gun, unfortunately, so no more shooty-shooty uh, for him. But uh, he can still try and influence things and score those precious, precious victory points. Selina Carl up next for the Batman crew. And uh, yes, she had a pretty straightforward turn. She moved with her massive 12-inch movement distance from back here into base contact with this organized crime suspect marker. Now, if you look at her traits, she has a backpack that gives her for free a reveal action every turn. So free action is in addition to anything else she could do. So even without audacity, she could move and still do it. Um, you can. So she's gonna reveal for freebies this suspect marker from organized crime. Um, keep a note of that that's uh, two um, suspect markers that the Batman crew has managed to take up this turn and she's still got her basic tactical action left so she's in its place gonna pop down a new suspect marker of her own okay and she cleans up after herself pretty good okay and uh, that concludes her activation but it's valuable for the scoring of points I think so there you go well twin one I think it is uh, foldy arms twin activated he was over here Instead of going for this suspect marker, which I suspect I should have done now, he decided he was going to, because it would have taken him away from being within four inches of his boss, which is his primary concern, unfortunately for him, uh, he has to. He was deigned to move back into combat with Batman, maybe to try and knock him out for the purposes of the end of the round, and maybe keep him out for the last turn of the game. But uh, it was not to be, unfortunately. Having an attack of three, now because his brother's not on the board against Batman's defense of four really did stack it against him especially since the strength die is removed due to Batman's uh, 
bat ar well, ballistic bat armor there. So uh, yeah, it just didn't work out. I keep forgetting how powerless defense attack three models are when they're coming in to try and hit defense four. So uh, it's just because uh, Batman was blocking on threes with four dice. It was uh, yeah, it wasn't so good for him. And uh, yeah, so it's now this guy's turn to feel like a bit of a chump. So there you go. That concludes the activations for round number three. We got through that pretty quickly because. Uh, well, both sides are suffering attrition, to be perfectly honest. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go into the recount phase back in just a second. Well, OK, uh, again, uh, that Batman took off a point of stun, as did the twin here and Catwoman. Catwoman's down to two points of stun left after rinsing herself of it all at the beginning of the game. Uh, unfortunately for organised crime, both of their henchmen, both Bouncer 2 and Detective Kenzie, remain KO'd. Kenzie's had a bad showing. He rolled another 11 on his endurance test, so he was not getting back up again. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, sometimes, I mean, in some of my playtesting games, these henchmen just kept getting back up again after being KO'd every turn. It was quite funny, but it was like whack-a-mole. But uh, no, this time they have uh, chosen smartness especially Kenzie he's decided to stay out of it for the remainder it's a shame he's such a he's a really useful model to have as well but it just uh, wasn't to be for him in this particular playthrough I'm afraid but uh, yeah so uh, yes uh, down to two models apiece for the end of the game but that said the uh, the Batman crew have got a uh, an advantage in which models they've got but the Penguin crew well organized crime crew has many suspect markers out on the board let's see how it finishes off for the rest for the crews in the last round of the game take the lead and raise the plan phases both finished for the last round and uh, can reveal with the an almighty 5-2 victory the organized crime crew have the initiative for this last turn uh, in terms of audacity it, both all four models on the board have it so that's that we're going to go into execute the plan phase now where everything could potentially change but organized crime will be going first celebrating the fact that he managed to uh go up against Batman and remain conscious for the entire game. Uh, this guy, number twin, uh, number twin one, sorry, twin number one, blah, 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 managed to activate. He was over here. He moved and popped down a suspect marker with his manipulate action. And that's him done and dusted. So yes, uh, not bad. That puts, that means that Morgan's Crime have got all eight of their suspect markers out again at this very late stage. Batman will be up next and uh, he activated he has audacity so he moved into contact with this suspect marker and he'll pick it up with his with a manipulate action to reveal it that's uh, remember that's that's the third suspect marker I believe the Batman crew have revealed and he's going to take a point of stun damage as a point of effort to uh, do use vigilante's work to put down another suspect marker he can do it within three inches so pop it over there for funsies as he uh, does more uncovering of uh, the, you know, the the penguins illicit drops business over here okay and that's him done and dusted and we'll be uh, going over to the penguin now almost bereft of bodyguards and realizing that he's outmatched by this psycho in a, in a bat suit um, penguin has moved to the edge of the board and popped down another suspect marker uh, with his manipulate action he can't do much more at this point because there's only again you can't put out more than eight suspects at a time if he'd gone over here to remove the suspect marker belonging to the batman crew then he wouldn't have been able to put down another one because there's one there already clearly within four inches so yeah getting the two points of putting one out on the board over there seemed like the best idea but uh, you know I'll be scored on that I'm sure in the comments if anyone has anything to say but yeah uh, that's the penguins go and uh, yeah he's over and done with Catwoman to finish yeah Catwoman activated and much like last turn she had suspect work to do so uh, she moved over she moved from over here into contact with the enemy suspect marker she uses her backpack action to uh, well it's a freebie action to reveal the suspect marker belonging to organized crime over here, uh, scoring another singular point for the Batman crew and uh, using her manipulate action to pop down another suspect marker. There we go. And that concludes the turn's activations. Nice. Um, yeah, uh, right, we're gonna go to the, well, would normally go to the recount phase to tidy things up, but uh, that's the end of everything for this game. We're gonna go to the scores in just a moment and uh, yeah, reveal who has won this shindig and give you some overviews. 
Okay, right, so recount phase, let's see who's won. Uh, right, in this scenario, for every suspect marker you have on the board belonging to your crew, you score two victory points, and you score one victory point for every suspect marker throughout the course of the game that you uh, remove, okay? Uh, reveal, even. Reveal. Remember, there's a difference between reveal and remove. Every time you reveal an enemy suspect marker, you get a victory point, okay? So, for the Penguin crew, they have seven of their eight markers out, so it gives them 14 victory points. That's, that's their hefty total there. <laughs> uh, they did not reveal any Batman crew uh, suspect markers throughout the game. So, uh, yeah, that's that for them. They do not have any more. No revealing suspect markers based points, okay? Uh, for the Batman crew, they have four suspect markers out on the board okay and so that gives them eight victory points not as high so far however they revealed let's see uh one, two, three, four. I'm using these counters to keep track of the uh, suspect reveals, basically. So they revealed four, so it puts them up from eight to 12 victory points. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, so, so far, Organized Crime is still winning. However, uh, if you look at the uh, victory conditions for the scenario, you'll see that uh, if the Catwoman is holding the loot bag that was carried by Detective Kenzie at the beginning, uh, then they score an additional three victory points, and she is. Remember, she hunted down him down and got that loot bag? She She's uh, still carrying it because she's not been killed in the meantime. And so, yes, another three victory points for the Batman crew. That gives them 15. So it's a victory for the Batman crew, 15 points to 14 in their favour. So that's uh, about as close as I've had it, to be perfectly honest. I didn't see that really coming, to be honest. Uh, a bit of a surprise. Um, so, yeah, just shows. I'm quite proud of this scenario. I wonder if you can tell. Um, yeah, it's quite fun. Right, so. Overall, the point of this scenario is to teach you know new players what you know why suspect markers can be important because they do factor into actual points. Um, they should do in most scenarios that you use them in because uh, that's what you know it's, it's, it's part of a balancing act between using uh, you know, manip your tactical actions to do damage to the enemy, or is it to you know is it to put down these suspect markers and actually trying to achieve objectives it's a delicate balancing act and there's lots of traits in the game certainly there are in this particular scenario which affect suspect marker placement whether you can do it or not there's ones we didn't even get to see have a look at detective kenzie for some of his he's got some really useful things you can do that's why it's good to shut him down early and uh, yeah it's uh, it's it's it, there's there's a lot to it it adds a huge more another massive um, tactical dimension to the overall game and uh, one well puts this game up there in my opinion with uh, a lot of the other decent games that I've played and that's a, a lot of games to choose from trust me uh, yeah I mean otherwise yeah I mean it, it was a bit touch and go there for a while for the Batman crew uh, Batman getting KO'd is kind of embarrassing this version of Batman is by, is by far and away not impervious to being killed I have actually had him offed before by this paint by this uh, organized crime uh, fivesome shall we say him being able to be outnumbered is quite damaging to him because you know he's very tempting to get him to weigh him in there try and get him against penguin and stuff but uh, yeah he can be taken down by weight of numbers and if he goes down permanently as in he gets knocked out and then has uh, his endurance knocked down by being you know hit whilst being ko'd you can just lose him and uh, that's an instant loss for the batman crew incidentally so yeah check those scenario victory conditions every time but yeah i hope you enjoyed this game uh, i hope you understood roughly where i'm coming from you know picked it up obviously uh, i may have got the odd bit hit wrong here and there but uh, i think i got the overall gist pretty much correct and uh, yeah if you have this starter set i quite recommend giving this scenario a go it is i think it's quite fun but feel free to make any modifications you like change around the uh, the organized crime henchman maybe uh, try you know some different you know batman characters if you want if you have a different batman model with different stats try him instead try see how see how he goes it's a, again these are tutorial scenarios designed to be a bit of fun rather and you know an introduction to the rules not hardcore tournament style competitive gaming by any means at all okay and yeah uh, give me you know any hit, hit me up in the comments if there's any questions about what i did or any rules i'm you know you, you're thinking i might have got wrong or you know or you weren't aware of or anything you want explained really because i surely kind of covered everything in my ramblings okay Okay. But yes, I'm Shield War 100. I hope you enjoyed this game and uh, hope to see you for the next ones. Okay? Yeah, take care and goodbye.